find the value of m for which the following simultaneous equations have infinitely many solutions. For two linear equations to have infinitely many solutions, it must satisfy two conditions. The first condition is that the gradient of the lines must be the same. And the second condition is that the y-intercepts of the lines must also be the same. In other words, both equations are going to be identical. The lines will be exactly the same. And so one way to approach this question is to first make y the subject for each of the equations. Making y the subject for the first equation, we're going to get mx minus 4 is equal to 2y. And solving for y, this is going to be y is equal to mx divided by 2 minus 4 divided by 2, which is 2. For the second equation, solving for y, we're going to get m minus 3y is equal to m minus x. And then dividing by m minus 3, y is equal to m divided by m minus 3 minus x divided by m minus 3. For these two lines to have infinitely many solutions, their gradients must be the same. And so equating the coefficients of the x term for each equation, we're going to get m on 2 is going to equal minus 1 on m minus 3. We can now solve for m. To get rid of the denominators, we can multiply both sides by 2 and by m minus 3. And so this is going to be m times m minus 3 is equal to minus 2. Expanding this, we're going to get m squared minus 3m is equal to minus 2. Bringing the minus 2 to the left-hand side, we're going to get m squared minus 3m plus 2 is equal to 0. We now have a quadratic equation. Factorizing this, we're going to get m minus 1 times m minus 2 is equal to 0. And solving for m, m is equal to 1 or m is equal to 2. What this means is that when m is equal to 1 or 2, the gradient of the two lines will be the same, which satisfies the first condition. Next, we need to test for the second condition to see which value of m will result in the same y-intercept. Subbing m is equal to 1 into the first equation, we're going to get the rule y is equal to 1 times x divided by 2, which is x on 2, and then minus 2. Subbing into the second equation, we're going to get y is equal to 1 over 1 minus 3 minus x over 1 minus 3. Simplifying this, this is going to be 1 on minus 2 and then plus x on 2. From here, we can see that the two lines are going to have the same gradient, which is 1 on 2, which satisfies the first condition. But it's going to have different y-intercepts which fails the second condition. And so we now need to test for the value of m is equal to 2. And so subbing m is equal to 2 into the first equation, we're going to get y is equal to 2 times x divided by 2, which is just going to be x, and then minus 2. And now subbing m is equal to 2 into the second equation, we're going to get y is equal to 2 divided by 2 minus 3 minus x divided by 2 minus 3. Simplifying this, this is 2 divided by minus 1, which is minus 2, and then minus x divided by minus 1, which is going to be plus x. And so the two lines now have the same gradient and the same y-intercept, which satisfies both conditions. Therefore, for the two equations that have infinitely many solutions, the value of m must equal to 2. Now that you've learned how to find the value of m for infinite solutions, try to see if you can answer exam style questions. Log into the Maths Methods Club and then select Algebra from the main topics, and then click on Simultaneous Equations. Here you're going to get all the simultaneous equation questions asked in the previous exams. Try to answer the Northern Hemisphere 2019 Exam 2 Multiple Choice Question 8. And scroll down. See if you can answer 2011 exam 1 take 3 question 6 or the 2010 exam 2 multiple choice question 7 and a few others listed on this page. Don't forget to check out my other videos to learn how you can find the values of m that will have no solutions or a unique solution for a simultaneous equation. 
and I hope this video helped and I'll see you guys in the next video.